In this video, we're going to focus on how we can jump to different color quadrants. So for example, here, I want to jump now to the red one. If I click on this, you get here immediately the red item. And then I go to blue, going up to the right, and then going down again. And so this is basically a part of zoom, but more specifically, the positioning or moving around on a chart. And this is very similar to this. So let's start to look how to do this item. So let's start to explore how to jump to sections in a bubble chart in Chart.js. So the first thing that we're going to do is here, we're going to get a default code, which you can find in Chart.js3.com, getting started, this specific link here, which is also in the description box. Scroll down and then just copy this entire chunk of code here. Copy this and then paste this all in here. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut out this and then make sure that we put it in the title. Save and here, of course, convert this into a bubble chart. So I'm going to say here bubble, and then the bubble chart has different structure here. So what I'm really making here is, if you're familiar with marking, there's what we call a growth, uh, growth, uh, profit, growth share matrix, and that's basically what we're trying to do here. So if you've ever heard of products that are called a cash cow, a star, a, uh, a question mark, or a uh, underdog. In that case, those kind of products is related to marketing and specifically that. And it's very interesting, although I want to go into that now. Maybe there will be separate topics for it. Anyway, what I want to do here now is I want to create four items in those quadrants as well. So right now it doesn't show anything because it didn't save anything yet. So let's say here 0, 0 0.5. Then we say here the Y value will be 0 0.5 as well. And then the radius will be 15 pixels, so nice and big. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this three more times. And then what I'm going to do is with this one here, will be in a bigger bracket, it will be 6.5. And this one will be 0 0.5. I'll just leave that, or maybe 0 0.7. No, I'm going to make sure that it is correct. And then we have another one here. I'm going to put this one on 9.5. And this 9.5 will have also another 9.5 here. And finally, we have this one here, which should have, uh, this one should be small, so we say 0 0.3, and this one will be large, 0 0.15, or well, I don't want to go above 15, say 0 0.12. Uh, sorry, not 0 0.12, 12 points. So refresh, there we are. So now we have this here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put those quadrants around, but you will see that they are slightly different, because I'm going to put it on here, and then here, and then later on, this one will be on that, and this one here. But you will you see them step by step. So now what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to start working on drawing these quadrants. So I'm going to create here a comma, I'm going to say plugins, and then here a bracket, I'm going to say here quadrant. So then I'm going to say a constant quadrant equals this ID quadrant comma. And then we're going to say here, the uh, uh, when are we going to draw them? We're going to draw them before the data set has been drawn. We're going to draw the background color first. So I'm going to say here, before data sets draw. And this is regarding to drawing time. And I'm going to use here three objects, the chart, arcs, and the plugin options. And then what I'm going to do here is we're going to do an object destructuring. If you want to understand what is object destructuring, I have a specific video in the description just go and watch understanding the uh, the object object destruct the object destructuring. That's very important to know. So I'm going to say a constant curly braces chart. Now what I'm going to use here is the following. I'm going to use only two items, CTX and the scales, specifically the X and Y scales, because we'll be needing those. So now what I want to do is I want to start to draw. And the first one that we want to draw is starting from here, zero to one, and then going up to one, and then go back to zero on the y or on the x scale. So here on the scale zero, see first zero zero coordinates, and then one, uh, what is it? Zero, uh, what is that? Uh, one, x, one, y, zero. And then here will be uh, x and y, one, and this one here will be uh, x zero and y one. All right, so let's start to do this. So I'm going to say here, ctx.save to save all the variables above. And I'm going to say ctx. Dot, and I'm going to say here, begin path to make sure that the canvas starts fresh and no other items or drawing items 
will be connected with this element or this object. And then what I'm going to say here is ctx.stroke style. And what we're going to do here is equal to a color. And in this case, I just want to use these simple colors here. I like uh, the colors that we have here. These are nice colors. So I'm going to grab these. This is the stroke. Uh, well, this is the stroke. So stroke would mean the border lines. So I want to make them solid. So I should get that one. Then what I also want to do is to have a background color. So ctx dot fill style. And this fill style is the background color. So let's copy this. But of course, no solid background color. With the alpha value of 0 0.2. There we are. So then we have this. Then what I want to do is I want to have a proper line width or border line, the thickness of the border line. So I'm going to say line width equals three pixels. So now we can start to draw. But to draw, we need the x and y coordinates and we need the, the width and the height. So what I'm going to do here is going to say ctx at rectangle, indicating that we're going to use a rectangle. And then here, we're going to put in four items here, the x, y, and then the width and the height. So we have to calculate, and the width and the height would mean basically the amount of pixels between this point to that point here. That's what we need to calculate. And then from here to there, that will be the height. So let's start to do this right now. So to make it very clear, I'm going to just cut out this. Put an enter here. Let's say put in this. All right, so we have this here as reference. But here, I'm going to make it very easy so you can easily follow along, or else you might get maybe confused. So the first one will be the X. So the X, you're going to get here this X dot. And I'm using X dot because we are allowed to use it because the object destructuring here. And then what I want to do here, I'm going to use a specific char JS command, which is called get the pixel for value. And what I'm really doing here is I want to get the X pixel for the value of whatever zero is. So I want this zero here. What is the pixel variable for this? So then I'm going to say zero. All right, that's number one. So the same we can do here for the Y, because we know the Y will start as well on zero. So then once we did that, we need to figure out now the width. And the width is not, what we can say here, number one, because if you would do that, you will see what will happen. Uh, let's do this one, but of course the width is X, because it's horizontal. Let's put in number one, if I save this, oh, of course we cannot do that yet, because I need to do another one here. I want to show you then first, let's give you a visual. And let's do this one, one as well, because that's what we expect do so then what I want to do here semicolon here and then I'm going to say a ctx dot fill to draw the, the, this command will draw the background color only and then we have another one is a ctx dot stroke for the border color so if I save this now and refresh there we are you can see here what is happening is exactly the opposite what is happening is basically it's calculate whatever is here plus the remaining because of the canvas if you want to understand how canvas calculates it's exactly it's very tricky but i would say check my video i have a video also in the description box it's it calls or it's in the name is understanding the chart area and that's what i'm referring to here what we need to do is we need to calculate it up and we need to play around with it so how do we do this well exactly the opposite what i want to do here is we have this value and then we need to deduct, because I need to know only the width. This is basically the difference between this point and that point. And what is happening now is it calculates not only this point and that point, but it calculates the this, this uh, amount of pixels here. And here as well, that's from here, because it should be number one, all the way to the beginning. So this is why we need to say here, minus x. And this one here will be minus y of our starting point and is the ending value save refresh there we are so this is the first quadrant so this is really exactly how we need to have them of course this still looks quite uh, inappropriate we have to still do more so let's start to work on the next item so what i want to do next one is well basically we have this but there are four quadrants so i'm going to do them now all to do this i'm going to create a function and let's call this function uh let's say our color quadrants Color quadrants. There we are. I'm going to cut all of this in, cut that and paste it in here. There we are. And now we save this. Save refresh. So all right. So nothing happens yet. Yet, but let's copy this and say now we're going to activate this. Save refresh. There we are. So behind the scenes we did a lot. Well, visually you don't see any difference. 
But here now we make this a bit more dynamic because now we can start to use all of these values. I'm going to put them in there and we can start to play around with them. So what I'm going to do is we have this border color. So I'm going to say border, comma, color for the background. Or maybe here BG color, BG color. And this is border color. That should be more appropriate. And then I'm going to say here, we have here the starting values and the ending values. So let's say here the following. The x-axis start. And then we have here the x-axis ending. And then we have here the uh, y-axis start and the y-axis ending value. So we have all of this and I realize we don't need to put it in there. I'm going to cut it out and we'll put it in here because this will be referenced later on because here we need the official values and this is the parameter. So we need the arguments here. So let's move this in there. So I'm going to cut out this. This is the stroke, which is the border color. So B color. It's the first one, comma. Then we have another one, which is the 0 0.2 here. And that is, of course, our BG color. BG color. And then what we have is, comma, that is the starting value, which is 0. 0, comma, and then the ending value on the X was number 1. And then for the starting value of the Y, 0, comma, 1. That's for the, uh, I see here, the double S, sorry. That is the ending value of the y and starting value of the y. So now we have these. So now we can say here, uh, x, uh, that one there. All right, and the x, and this is the y axis. This is start. So that's why we have this here also more organized or else we, we might get confused. Then we have here the x axis uh, ending. Then we have here the x axis start. And then we have here the y axis ending and we have here the x sorry not the x-axis the y-axis start so now we have that so that's why i have this more organized here so please pay attention and make sure you have them like like these in this order or else you will get an error or you get some confusion so if i save this now refresh there we are it works exactly the same except now we have now completely changed our structure so now if i copy this let's put in another one here and what I want to do here for the next one is, oh, well, let's say this. I want to go up. So that will be on the y-axis, number one. But on the x-axis, we're on zero. So I'm going to say here on the y-axis, starting point will be number one. And then I'm going to move this all the way to 15. And then the end will be 15. So if I save this, but I want to give it another color, let's give this a blue color. Copy that. Put it in here. So this will be our blue quadrant. When you put it in here, but of course make sure later on we need to have the uh, solid color here. Save, refresh, see what happens. All right, so we're getting here something, but something here very undesirable, so I need to study what is going on here right now. So we have this, and uh, somehow it completely went up. All right, so let me double check this. So this caught me slightly off guard, but after looking, what we did was just correct. So let me explain why this happens here. And if you look at the number here, the scale is on 12. Let's look back in what we have inserted, which is 15. So of course it will go beyond, because let's be honest, it must be on 15. So that was the issue. So there's no real issue here. However, we can make this a bit more better by making sure that the Y scale has the right minimum and maximum values for now. So I'm going to say here, I'll put in 15, so that will look much better. Did I put a comma here? All right, there, comma, save, refresh. There we are. So now it works again accordingly. So no mistakes from our side, everything is fine. So next one is, let's color this part here, and then we have the other one here. So what I'm going to do here is, not our item, Make, let's make sure we have semicolons here. So we have the, the red, the blue quadrant, and then we're going to make now what we call the yellow quadrant, which is the third one in line here. So we copy this. And the yellow quadrant, well, let's see what we're going to do. Where are we going to position it? So I think it would be the best. It would be all right, it's just there, don't worry. But I think it would make sense just to have it here, in that area. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to start here at, uh, 
on the x value 1 and all the way to 15 as well. We're going to do that as well. So we say here x will be number 1 and this will be 15. And on the y value, we start at 1, which is here, this is the y, and then going all up to 15. So eventually we cover this entire region or area or quadrant. So I guess that's already correctly set. Save a refresh. Absolutely beautiful. But of course, here, scale is number 10. Let's start to modify that as well. So comma here, and then this is the min uh, zero, and of course max value will be 15. Save, refresh, there we are. All right, so now we have this final item here within this item here. How will we do this? I'm going to grab here the last one, which will be the green quadrant. And the green quadrant, well, let's look at it. We will start on the x value, one, and then on the y value, it's zero, all right? But if I see x value one, and then the ending x value would be 15. So let's do that first. So one and 15, and then here, zero to one, all right? Zero to one, sorry, save. And then make sure we have the green color. Did I grab the green color? Not yet. Copy this green color, the fourth value here. Put it. Get there, the same here. Of course, the alpha value number two. There we are. All right, so now we have the most important part done. You might see here with these border lines, we could maybe reduce them maybe into three pixels, maybe one pixel only. Save, refresh. Maybe that's better. That's more acceptable. So, what I want to do now is I want to make sure. Oh, let me just hide that. So, now we have everything ready. What I want to do now is to have a, a button where we can move into red, blue, yellow, or green. And this will be interesting because we're going to make here basically a dynamic movement. And that is eventually very useful if you're going to use zoom and you want to go from, from the, when you zoom in, you want to go up or down, left and right. So these kind of things are very useful eventually. However, let's start to work on it. So first thing what I'm going to do here, uh, let's see, I want to put in buttons here down. So we're going to put in the buttons here. It's very simple, we're going to see a button, very straightforward, and I say on click. And if on click, I want to trigger basically a function, or more specifically, I want to move to that. So I want to say move to quadrant, and the quadrant would be whatever the value is. So we're going to put in here some specific values. Uh, well, what are the values? Well, we already know them. If not mistaken, that should be this one here. I'm going to copy these values and they're going to use them. I'm going to in here, and then what I'm going to do here is uh, let's see, we have this. I'm going to say here red. All right. So, what I'm going to do with this is basically we're going to match them later with the min and max values here to show them correctly. So, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to copy this, two, three, four. All right, let's duplicate all of this. So one, two, three, and this is the blue quadrant. Blue, it should be yellow. And the final one is green. Copy all of this. And then put it in there. Finally here, last one, the green one, put in there. So now let's start to make this specific function. So I'm going to go here all at the bottom. I'm going to say here, um, function equals move quadrant. And then here we have again the same variables that we basically could use in our same term. So I'm going to put an enter, enter, enter. All right, so we have more space. And in here, I'm going to say uh, the x starting value. Then we have as well the x ending value. Then we have the y axis starting value and then we have the y-axis ending value so in here I'm going to use now this I want to modify to to get there we need to go from my chart to config and from config we go to option scales and then we have here the x and y to make it very short or to use a shorthand here I'm going to say constant and I'm going to say here scale equals my chart dot config dot options dot scales 
So that's the only thing I'm going to do because then later on we can just pinpoint exactly what I want. So I'm going to say here this, which is basically this entire uh, object name or namespace. And then we're going to say here, what I want is dot x, which is basically here the x, and then dot min. And we say equal to what exactly? Well, to the starting x axis. So then, of course, you can guess, we can do the same one for the max. And the max will have a ending. And then, of course, duplicate this, but now specifically for the y axis. Y, there we are. And then here, y, there we are. Let's say here, y, and y. So now we have this. Finally, here, I'm going to say here, my chart, which is the ID here, the constant, which is the chart object, and then I'm going to say here, update the chart. Save. Refresh. There we are. So now if I click on this, you can see here we get this, and then you do see this one here. Of course, we might be able to do another way, but this is for now, just as an experiment and to explore more. You can see here, now we're moving here. We're going here to the yellow, and I have here the green one. So what I would like to do here, maybe to change at least the colors here so it would be far more logical just want to put only the dark color here and here as well save that refresh there we are so now we can zoom in here you can imagine we could do far more basically with this there's a lot more we can play around with this but this is quite fun to already explore and that's basically how you can play around with movements in a chart so if you like this video and maybe you might want to know about zooming, well, guess what? Well, there's still a lot about zooming. I have a specific video here. Just a quick note, this is an experimental video, but these two together will eventually give us the zoom in, the zoom out, the move up, move down, and left and right positioning in ChartJS, which is very, very interesting eventually. So I would highly recommend you to explore this one as well, because those two together are very powerful.